Howdy, everyone. Well, let me once again get you caught up on uh, some simple little things that I've been working on um, over the last few days. Um, in my last video, or one of my last videos, I was talking about um, flying out to help another guy uh, with his build, with his wings. Since I've been back home, I haven't had a whole lot of time to work on my own airplane, but I've been picking at um, a few simple things. So I'll go over those now real quick. Um, so you can see, obviously, the canopy is off and this front area is uh, off. The, uh, the top skin has been taken off, taken off. I'll get to that here in a minute. As far as the canopy goes, um, I had put another layer of uh, fuel tank sealant between the front edge of the canopy and the, the skin of the canopy. I put a, I made that a lot wider and I have it going a little bit further up the windscreen and a little bit further down on the skin. Make that wider and just try to kind of smooth that over a little bit to make a nice fillet. I had done that. I also came back and some of these screws on the rear window were a little high and with the Targa strip being on the canopy, the Targa strip would come back and it would rest on those screws and there'd be a little bit more of a gap between the bottom of the Targa strip and this rear window because it was resting on the high screws. So one at a time, I just came back and removed the screws and uh, using the uh, the deburring tool, the, the hand deburring tool, I just went ahead and countersunk these ever so slightly deeper as required to make sure that the screws sat down in the, in the countersink nice and flat. I did that, and then I also came back and I cleaned up this top edge of the actual window itself, this uh, plexiglass edge. I just kind of rounded it almost like a um, almost like a chamfer a little bit on it just to clean it up and again to let that to let that target strip sit nice and flat all through the uh, this area of of the uh, rear window. So once I got that done, I got the screws recessed, I got the uh, this forward edge cleaned up, and I added another layer of fuel tank sealant around the front. I went ahead and pulled the canopy off. It is now sitting in the basement, and that will give it a nice super long time for all that fuel tank sealant to, to dry up really nice. So now what I'm planning on doing is I want to, I'm seriously considering riveting this skin in place. I'm not 100% sure I'm ready to do that quite yet, but getting ready for that, I'm just thinking of other things that need to be done that, that I've either avoided or I just haven't gotten to for different reasons. So one of the things that I was thinking about is, as you know, I've got the uh, ejection handle for the canopy, the jettison handle for the, for the canopy. That, of course, is a solid handle that goes through the instrument panel through the sub panel and attaches to the mechanisms back here to uh, remove the canopy. And that's why I wanted it, so I can uh, be able to take the canopy on and off, basically. Um, of course, that's a solid handle that passes through here and it attaches to this lever arm here. And this skin will be completely riveted in place. So. If I ever wanted to remove this instrument panel, the only way I can get that jettison handle off would be to crawl up underneath everything and reach up from underneath and try to get this pin off of this arm and with the cotter, the cotter pin will be in it. I'd have to take that pin out and, and push this clevis pin out just to get that handle out so I could remove the instrument panel. So what I'm planning on doing is modifying the handle. So I've got the spring. The spring goes on here. And I'm going to figure out where I can cut this handle and put in a splice and have that splice 
somewhere in here between the panels. So all I have to do is reach up underneath the instrument panel, pull out a pin, and then that handle will separate. This, can, this end will stay attached and this end of the handle will come out and then I'd be able to take the instrument panel off. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Probably won't go into too much detail with that. Once I get it completed, I'll show you what I came up with, but I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step on how to basically splice using a piece of tubing. The other couple of things, um, I've got my stick grips now. These are ordered from Aircraft Spruce. They're very simple. They come with this simple rocker switch. It's a it's a momentary switch. There's actually, I guess it's two switches in one. No big deal. Very simple. Um, again, right? It's an aircraft part. So it's, let me ask you. So here it is, right? It's just a piece of plastic. It's literally just a piece of molded plastic split in two with a couple of bolts to hold it together. And it's got a relatively cheap rocker switch. How much do you think this should cost? realistically 50 bucks maybe these things were over a hundred dollars a piece anyway so when you look at these online you can get them like i have them here with nothing on them or you can get them with a couple of added switches up here which i chose not to do because i figured I'm, i'd like to add my own and then what's nice is and unexpected on the actual instructions, they talk about some additional switches that you can add where, you know, up here on the top and along the sides and things like that. That was a nice little surprise because I had kind of sort of thought about doing that anyway, but they don't advertise that on the website. They only advertise these two up here. So you can get them with a couple of extra buttons on the top, but they don't talk about potentially adding buttons anywhere else. So I thought that was kind of cool because, like I said, I thought about maybe doing that anyway. And then after I got the, after the handles were delivered and I started looking through the instructions, they actually mentioned that you can add some other ones in different places. So that's kind of nice. Don't know if I'll do that yet. And at this point, I don't know how many individual switches I need. And I have absolutely no idea what their functions are going to be. And I don't know if I want any of that on the stick, if I just want to leave everything on the instrument panel. So these may not have anything on them. I may not even use the rocker switch, but we'll see. I just like these because there is provisions to put switches on these if you want. And I like the, the fact that they're angled and they've got the uh, thumb rest and the, the uh, palm rest, if you will, down here. So, And the other thing is I bought a uh, TCW um, backup battery. And this is a, an integrated electronic system. You get the battery, of course, and inside the battery case is electronics so that it can, um, it senses voltage and different things and it will automatically switch over your system. You can connect, I think it's up to four individual systems to this battery as a backup. And like I said, it's got, it's got electronics inside of it so that if your main battery pack fails, this will automatically take over and power the four components that you have connected to it if you decide to go that route. Right now, I'm looking at probably only having one item tied into the backup battery, but I'm not there yet. I'm just a work in progress at this point, but I'm excited to have it. Because that's another part, obviously, of the avionics electronics setup. So I need to have these things in hand so I can start wiring switches. I can start wiring in backup power. I need these things in hand before I start installing them and doing the wiring. So I'm happy to have them. And I think that's it for now. I think that's the latest and greatest. Um, still no real headway on the engine. Uh, this place has got my engine pieces parts, and I swear it's, I don't, I actually have no idea what the problem is. This guy's had my stuff for like three weeks now, and uh, I don't know what he's doing. I've done business with him before. I know he's always been super slow, and I know that um, 
you know, he does work for actual companies. He does work for actual, you know, airports and, and companies. So I'm not high on the priority list by any means, but uh, I trust him. I've dealt with him before. I really like him. He does really good work, but I just wish I was hoping to have my engine, you know, partially assembled by now. Anyway, enough of that. So that's it. I'm going to get cranking on this uh, on this jettison T handle, and uh, I will talk to you guys later.